Blair, and, so, and the, all the other ones. But Team Skull, I think, is the funniest one out of all of them. I love them so much. Team Blair was scary. I mean, they could have really done yeah. some serious damage had they hung out, but... Team Blair was more, like, serious. Yeah. Plasma. <laughs> I love Team Skull, though. They're so funny. I do. I like them. Even the games. Do you guys play the games? Do you have Sun and Moon? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? <laughs> cool. But I wish I had time to play the games. I, I love them. Like, uh, I, I do have like X and Y and Black and White. I have like no time to play them. I wish I had more time. So, Chris plays them a lot. <laughs> when when uh, Go, Pokemon Go, the Go came out last fall, um, I live in Fort Lee, New Jersey, and it's kind of spread out all over near the George Washington Bridge, and of course, the first few weeks, there were like groups of like eight, ten, and they're walking into walls, and they're walking out into traffic, and, but I had, I would go walk behind them and just kind of wait till they're really into it, and I would say, did you catch me yet? <laughs> Unfortunately, they would turn around and just think I was out of my mind. <laughs> they would just they had no idea. I mean, my son, when, when Pokemon first came out, he was four. So one day after school, I picked him up. So this must have been the year after. And uh, I said to his friend, I said, you know, I'm, I'm Gary, by the way. Gary who? I said, Gary O from Pokemon. And he was like, yeah, right. And so nobody ever believes me. What am I gonna do? But it's okay. It's fine. But but when Pokemon Go first started, that was an adventure because there were. I mean, it was a little scary actually because kids were walking into the street and not seeing where they were going. But it was still fun anyway. So. That's why they're putting the, the warning in the beginning. It's like not, they put a warning in the beginning. You know, to, especially people driving too, because they, they'll they'll pop a warning and say you're going too fast. <laughs> Which is funny because sometimes I'll just be walking and you know it's like I'm not in a car, I'm not in a car. But uh, yeah, I mean I think that's a good thing too to put the warnings up too. Pokemon Go is the one thing that I, I do have time to play because you walk a lot in New York. When you're in, in New York, you, you do a lot of walking. So I'm like, oh, okay, at least I can play this. Like the other games on the Nintendo DS and stuff, it's a little more harder and you have to put a little more time into it. But I'm like, oh, Pokemon Go is easy. I'm just walking. There it is. Catch it. Awesome. So <laughs> that's a lot more easier to do than, than the other games. So I, I, but I'm still only level 24, so. Some people around here are like level 40. I'm like, how? You need like 500 million points to try and do that. There's, I don't, how many levels are there? I don't know, 40? I think it stops at 40 right now. Yeah, that's crazy. How many of you play Pokemon Go? Pokemon Go? <laughs> it's a green area right here. <laughs> cool. Doesn't, wait. See, I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I never have any time to do anything. But um, I, I truly don't know. In the game, doesn't the camera on your phone automatically open up? You can turn it off. You can turn off the camera, or you can have it on. Yeah. But does it like if you? But it'll take pictures. Like if you're in your house. You can't take pictures. If you take it, if you're like on the toilet. <laughs> playing the game uh, take a picture of your bathroom. <laughs> I don't know. I'm asking. I really don't know. Because you can there, tell it to. Like, it won't can, do it automatically. No, it, it won't? Automatically. Okay, that's good. You because there was a conspiracy going around when the game first came on. They're saying, well, this is part of Google. And Google, you know, they've taken pictures of every outside space in the world. Now they're after your house. <laughs> and this is how they're going to do it, by taking pictures in when you're playing the game. And it, I mean, it was conspiracy. It was a little, you know, tin hat, all that kind of stuff. But when you think about it, as long as you can turn it off, then that's fine. I didn't know that. But I don't want anybody taking a picture of my toilet. <laughs> I don't. So that's a lot of people playing it. Is it great? I, I have a lot of friends of mine that have sent me pictures of me. I mean, Meowth. <laughs> Like all over the place, um, and they use. I'm trying to figure it out. Is it gyms or library? Uh, churches. They use churches for yeah. gyms. The stops. Yeah. The stops. Stop. The stops. Where well, you can get pokeballs. <laughs> okay, because yeah. for a while I know at St. Luke's Church, where my wife preaches, um, there were 
kids all over the front steps going crazy for like weeks, which was fun. But it was a little, in, it was interesting, so. So what's the highest level anybody's gotten? 14. 40! Okay, so that's it. So are they gonna, are they gonna upgrade it? Maybe soon, it's the one year anniversary. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. That's what we'll get done. I wish they had let us talk in the games, that would have been fun. Uh, yeah. I, just, I just hit 30 on Tuesday. I just I just hit level thirty on Tuesday when we went to go visit the new castle. Yay! Yay. I caught a Mr. Mime today. Yay! We don't have Mr. Mime in the states. We have Tauros instead. So I got my first Mr. Mime. This solstice event has thrown me off. Tauros is the United States or North America, I suppose. Mr. Mime is Europe. Kangaskhan is in Australia, <laughs> Farfetch'd is in Asia, and the rumor is that Heracross is in South America. I don't know if Africa is. You have to go on each continent. I'm going to watch any Go get them. Catch them all. This has Corsola. Just to go to each. What's that? Africa has Corsola. Africa has Corsola? That's not fair. I want Corsola. No. It's any tropical area. Any tropical area. Oh, that makes more sense. But you can still catch them in eggs. No, you can't. No, you can't. Oh, really? No? No, you can't. Some of them you can hatch them to eggs. You got to like it. Yeah, but you have to get them from Not those eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Should we take some questions? Okay, I'll start on this side and I'll work around the other. Okay. Yes, over there. She's got a bicep. Red coat. Uh, hi. Do you kind of feel like James is a good person, but he's kind of in too deep now, and he just follows <laughs> Jesse and Leo? Is James a good person with bad people? <laughs> I think James and BF too are sweethearts. I really do. They're very good. They're easily hurt, very gentle. The second episode that I voiced as James was Sweet Baby James. When he had to had to give his chime echo to Nanny and Pop Pop, and there's there are several parts in that episode where he cries, and I can't cry unless I'm crying, so I just cried my way through that episode. But it was like a whole different. Not that that was the first time that that side was shown, but he's a dear heart, and Meowth is a big mush too. You know? <laughs> so yes, the answer is yes. James is a, is a good heart. There's noodles roaming off where Meowth just wants to be a noodle chef. That's right. Except I don't remember what he says he does. Yeah, Meowth makes noodles because he's tired of getting pushed around. <laughs> but, and Jesse's a dear heart too. But I think Jesse has issues. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> She's got her issues. He's yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Huh? Wow! What? Do you want to die? They only faint. They faint. Yeah. They, they just faint. Right. Oh, <laughs> well, if you ever watched um, Yu-Gi-Oh, no, Weevil like Underwood, he thing. was always a. <laughs> <laughs> He was a bug trainer, but what I loved about him was he was a really intense guy, but he always ended up getting beat, crying, and fainting. <laughs> I miss the guy. He hurt my throat like crazy when I had to do it. He was just up here like this! <laughs> but it still was fun. And Eric Stewart was my director! So we all go back a long time, a long way. We're all a big family, but uh, anyway, that's that. <laughs> Do you want to take another question? <laughs> oh, so hi. So I just want to quickly say, um, Weevil Underwood was my favorite character in Yu-Gi-Oh! as a kid, but I also want to ask, um, for both of you, would you say anime has influenced your life in any way, has impacted it because you're both voice actors? Anime influenced your life. Yeah, go ahead. Well, with it, it's funny because like I'm I'm kind of an anime fan. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so I it was funny because when I was younger I would watch like Speed Racer and Voltron and things like that, and I didn't know it was from Japan. I had no idea because I was a kid, and I was like, "Yay, Voltron robots, cool!" So, 
as I got older, when I was in college, I, I first started to get into anime, which, which was kind of cool. I was like, oh, this is from Jap Japan, and they dub it into English. So the first one I ever really watched was called Battle Angel. I don't know if anybody knows what that is. It's like a two-episode OVA. It's like, nobody really knows Battle Angel. Okay. How about... It was called Poltergeist Report, Yu Yu Hakusho. I love Yu Yu Hakusho! So, yeah, okay, so he does it. So, um, I, so I started to get into that. So my favorites, really, I love Cowboy Bebop. Yay! So, uh, Yay. Ghost in the Shell is one Yay. of my favorites. Like, the movies and the show, I love the show too. I love, I love following it, both of them. Um, so it's funny because I started out um, kind of as a fan, and then at conventions, um, I used to go, like, I was one of you, I was, a, I was an attendee, I was, I, you know, I went and I, I paid for my badge and everything and went to panels and stuff, I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And then it's funny, I became a staffer at one of the conventions, so I was one of the people that run the show, so that was fun. And then I, I went through stages and then I got into voice acting, so now I'm on this side and I get to be a guest at conventions, which is really cool. So. I, I don't know if anime necessarily has influenced my voice acting, um, because like I wanted to do theater. I wanted to start out as theater. I wanted to be on Broadway. I don't want to be in all the plays. Um, <laughs> but my life kind of changed, and I went into news instead. And then I got into voice acting like through that. So to do more fun stuff. So yeah, I think I don't know. I don't know, it influenced me starting to go to conventions. So I'll say that with anime. <laughs> well, the thing about, the, well, I'll go back to the four kids thing. Is when they were doing, they had five or six studios and eight different shows going all the time. And there were so many things that I kind of, I mean, it was my total life, but I kind of didn't even know what I was doing at. I mean, I was doing it, but I couldn't remember it. So there was a show called um, Revolutionary Girl Utena. And I was Ricky, who was the piano player, whose sister was in love with him, and all that kind of stuff. So we did, I don't know how many seasons, maybe four. And the last season it was for Central Park Media. And so um, Tom Whalen was the producer, and he came in the last day, and he said, okay, we're all going to sit down, we're going to do a video about your experience is doing Utena and what the show is about. And I said, I don't know what the show is about. <laughs> to this day, I mean, I'm, I can describe it, but I really don't know what it's about. But everybody's looks great when they all sit around and plot the destruction or the overthrow of the world. And I liked Mickey anyway because he was so gentle. And he was a piano player. That's right, and I'm a piano That's right. But uh, there's an awful lot of shows back there that uh, I miss a lot of them. Oh, there's a show, Cindy here knows, uh, called The Ping Pong Club, <laughs> which is probably an unknown show, but I was the character of Maeno, and they did 26 episodes, and it's just right on the borderline of like, oh, that's just wrong. <laughs> but it's about a, an eighth grade class of boys who have a ping pong club, and you can imagine what happens in but if you ever like have time to kill go on youtube and check out ping pong club because it's a really funny show we would go in and just dub stuff and do it on the fly and there was really no we could say kind of whatever we wanted and we did and it was the the, the original gang um from like Yu Gi Oh and all the four kids that we're all doing this show but it's like very strange so anyway ping pong club please check it out it's, and hopefully you'll still like me later. You may want to put a parental warning on that. Yeah. They should. They put I know. It's a hard, hard R. <laughs> oh. Oh. Do we have another question? Um, has any stone that you uh, regretted doing? Or any, mm. any stone that... Uh, <laughs> ping pong club, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anything you regretted doing? I, no, I don't think so. I because they all pay. Because they all pay our bills. Because <laughs> we all get paid money for them, so we can pay our rent and our electric and gas and heat and all that stuff. <laughs> I uh, 
No, I don't. I don't like to go in there to go into any booth and do a bad job. I like to go in there and give 200% and come out either crying or sweating or any, I, didn't, I don't care you know, what it is. Like I want to make that character believable and I don't want to do a bad job at all, ever, when I go into a booth. When I go in there, when I go in for that audition, I go like, oh, this is just a junkie show, I don't know. I, I go in and do like the best audition that I can, so. I like I appreciate you know any roles that I can get in you know video games or anime or anything. I, I work on telephone prompts and those are boring, but they pay the bills. That's if you when you call somebody say like, thank you for calling Mastercard. Please press one for this. Really? So yeah. <laughs> well, not Mastercard. I don't do the Mastercard or Visa. I don't, I don't know what credit cards they have here. <laughs> Just saying. I'm talking about American credit cards, but I'm not sure. Have oh, are they the same? Oh, they got, oh, okay, great. So American, American Express. Express. Well, American <laughs> Express like Visa, Discover, those kind of things. So, and those are and those that's boring. Do that now? Yeah, that's yeah. way cool. I want to do that. <laughs> it's boring though. It's really because you have to do it really flat. It's like, because sometimes you know they'll have like the numbers and months and days, so you have to go October, November, December because it's like you know press one. It's like your card was activated on. September 9th, 1984, you know? <laughs> but you have to do it the same way because then it'll sound weird if you don't. <laughs> right. So it's really, really boring. <laughs> That's great though. We'd like to know before we connect you if you're an idiot or not. Press one if you don't know your name. Press two if you'd like to know mine. <laughs> That's, I think it's a great gig. I think it would be great. I don't know. Gigs are gigs. I'm grateful. Every time I go into a booth somewhere and I don't get kicked out, I'm grateful. It's great. And then maybe eventually down the line there'll be a check. That would be nice too. But the work is, is very important no matter what it is. So. Yeah. Next. What'd you get? Where'd, oh, there she is. <laughs> like, where'd she go? She's all the way back there. Hi, James. Uh, quick question. Would you say James is the ultimate Pokemon trainer as he asks first, and do you think Jesse would get jealous? <laughs> He's very polite, isn't he? He really is. I mean, he, he you know, the th it's funny, I used to joke when uh, Tom Whalen was directing, sometimes we would joke about Ash because it was like, yeah, Ash, he, he likes his Pokemon, but he kind of beats the crap out of him. And then, <laughs> and then they're like laying there with broken bones. He's like, get out! Get up! Damn it! Get up! But James, you're right. He's very polite about it. He doesn't want any of his Pokemon to get hurt or anything like that. So yes, he's very gentle and he has good ones. But the poor guy keeps getting bit on the head all the time. <laughs> and it's right season twenty. He's getting bit more, and you know, I don't know. I feel, but he seems to recover quicker. So. It's also but yes, tolerance. I think to he is a good. Yes, that's true. He's more tolerant. Yes. So that's that. Uh, in Weevil's voice, could you please say, maybe I should keep Exodia? Yeah, you should have kept that. Shall I be thoughtful or shall I be aggressive? Aggressive, mean. Thoughtful. Th He's hard to be thoughtful, but let's see. <laughs> maybe I should keep Exodia. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should keep it, Sonia, you such and such. Yeah. That was clean. There are children here. Why are you angry? Oh, there she is. Oh, you're up in the front now. Hi. So, imagine James and Meowth swap worlds with Weevil Underwood. <laughs> Do you think <laughs> that Weevil Underwood would be a better Pokemon thief? Then James and Meowth would be duelists. Wow. Oh. Oh. Who do you think would be better? I've never heard that kind of question before. I know, that's my, I have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> that's a crazy question. I mean, I never, you know, Weevil, I mean, he, by the time the jig was up with him, he would faint. The jig would be up with James and Meowth, and they would still be there feeling and feeling, you know, sorry and sad and stuff. 
<laughs> See, but when Weevil blasts off after he fainted, so he just gotta be like, <laughs> But the question, I'm not answering your question. I don't think I know the answer. That's a tough question. Weevil's definitely more of a hard butt than James and Mia. But James is a better collector. Yeah, and, but Jesse keeps stealing all of his bottle caps and pokeballs. And... She'll steal you, Zodia. I mean, there was, a, there was a whole season where James must have lost every bottle cap that he had. And he had some seriously good ones. But uh, I don't know. They could probably switch places. But if I had to do five, one time I did five hours of Weevil voicing, and I had a fever, I got the flu from that, and I was sick for like three days. So that, because I can do James and Meowth all day long, and Meowth has got some gravel, but Weevil, everything was about just being clenched. You know, Meowth, I just, you know, just falling off a look. So, but we was definitely a uh, one of a kind, one of a kind. God bless him. Hi. I don't, oh, I should. Oh, okay. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're following the microphone. Hi. Um, Chikorita is my favorite Pokemon, and I was just wondering if you could do some Chikorita for me. Well, I voiced. See, I know it's weird because I have Chikorita on there. I voiced Chikorita for the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. So I didn't actually, ah, it's so misleading, I apologize for that. It's fine. So I didn't voice Chikorita, because they keep it in Japanese. Chikor so Chikorita in the show, as the Pokemon, is is the Japanese version of it. Oh, okay. Um, but I voiced her for the Mystery Dungeon when they actually spoke the Team Go-Getters out of the gate. Right. So for that one, I was in that. Well, you were, who were you in that? No, you, you weren't in that? I don't think so. I wrote it, but I didn't. You wrote that. Yeah. You wrote the script for that. Uh, yeah, um... Oh man, I can do that one for you. <laughs> some, yeah, some of the Pokemon are really like, you know, James said, like harsh on your voice. It's almost like voicing Weevil Underwood. Because, uh, and we usually save those for last. First, we'll like record the people, and then we'll go back and record the Pokemon. But, um, the easiest ones for me are latios and latias because it's like all up in my nose, so it's not in my throat. It's like <laughs> so, like that's the easiest one. Right? They put an echo effect on it, so it you know it doesn't sound like that. It's got this huge echo on it, which is pretty cool. But the harsh ones are like is the dust ox, and the dust ox episode where there's like thousands of dust ox. I was ready to die.